Just remember, Durst is the worst. <laughs> Durst the worst, bitch. Are we going inside? No. We're not. Off the bill. And all the replacement bills. We found out there's a reason why for seven years there was no replacement bill, right? Because we found out what it really was. And if you take a trillion dollars out of health care and give it back in a tax cut to the wealthiest Americans, guess what? People will lose health coverage. Because health care is so expensive, and, health, and not just the medical care itself, but health insurance coverage, that an upper middle class person can't afford it on their own, let alone a middle class person, or, or a working person, or a moderate income person. And so the only people who care about whether everyone has a right to health care is we the people, and the only instrument we have to guarantee it is our own democratic government. That's right! That's right. right. And so that became very clear, and it was 17 percent support for this bill, which is amazing. That's about as low as it can get, and they still, Donald Trump still used all of his political capital, and Paul Ryan's all his political capital, and little shell games like Congressman Fred Upton claiming he was against it, and then accepting some easily amount of money, right? Shame! Which doesn't do anything about people in fixed conditions. Even worse, it's unbelievable. They said that we would keep the previous condition protections because that was so unpopular, no one could believe that anyone would go back today when an insurance company denied coverage, charge a rate that people couldn't afford, carve out parts of the body, throw people with breast cancer off coverage right after the diagnosis, that that wouldn't happen again. Well, surprise, surprise, we have a bill that would allow it again, that would return to those days. So how is that even possible that a major political party in this country would take such an unpopular position? Charade. It's partly because they lied to their own voters since 2011 about what the Affordable Care Act was, which is a very moderate reform, a step forward, did not do everything we need, but did end outrages like pre-exist condition discrimination, which is on the level of things like child labor, right, as far as something that shouldn't be allowed as a business practice. And so all of you and people like you all over the country shine this bright spotlight. And they forced it through anyway, which is stunning. But everyone always thought the Senate would be harder. Now, we shouldn't take it for granted the Senate could pass a bill like this, or they could come to some other compromise like the Upton Amendment that doesn't really do anything, but they can claim got something to protect people. But right now, what's going on is because of their attempt to take health care away from 24 million people and to go back to pre existing discrimination and literally ask seniors, low income seniors, to pay in Wisconsin an average of 11700 a year in premiums, which they cannot afford without not including co based deductible. What does that mean? It means they're uninsured, right? So they don't care if they're insured. And so, what happened in this process is that people have come to realize that not only is the Affordable Care Act not so bad and now the majority support it, but that in fact we need to go way beyond the Affordable Care Act that health care is a fundamental human right. And we're going to join all the advanced industrial countries in this world in guaranteeing it's a fundamental human right. And so we're going to do, there's no major medical organization for this bill. There's no health care advocacy organization for this bill. There's virtually no public support for this bill. It's pure politics. They're hoping they can do this this year and then everyone is forgotten by no. November of 2018. Or the congressional yeah. district is so gerrymandered that they won't matter and they'll still be re-elected. But if you think about the U.S. Senate, even though it was supposed to be less responsive to public opinion, it's more responsive because they can't gerrymander a state. They can't add the upper peninsula of Michigan to Wisconsin, right? At least they haven't figured that out yet. Let's put it that way. And so, what's interesting is that Senator Johnson has said a lot of the right things. Senator Johnson has said that the House is moving far too quickly, that this is complicated, that uh, that Republicans and Democrats should get together and figure out what they can agree on as far as moving forward and changing the Affordable Care Act. And so he has certainly sounded like he's against this bill even before the latest amendment. And his staff has talked that way. We met with his legislative director in DC a couple times. People have met with the state staff here. But here's the thing about Senator Johnson. None of the people who track this at the national 
level, think he's an uncertain bug. They all think he's a yes bug. So either they're not, either they're wrong, or Ron Johnson is taking one position is going to do something else. And so this is now, Ron Johnson is now uh, literally in the spotlight, right? And we're going to find out whether he's going to have town hall meetings with his constituents to actually discuss this and what he actually says to the media and then what he does because likely what happens here is that there's a kind of a closed process in Senator Mitch McConnell, the majority leader's office, where the Republican senators that can't work out what they're going to do, whether they're amending this bill, whether they're doing a totally different bill, which then has a lot of trouble getting passed in the, the Freedom Caucus, right? Or what they're going to do. It's not sounding like they're going to move immediately. So I think Ron Johnson should now have a series of town hall meetings with people all over the state to find out what they think. And that's what we're asking for. If he's going to be disruptive, that would be great. We will work with anyone who wants to make sure that health care is affordable and is a fundamental right for everyone. So we will work with Ron Johnson if he will. And by the way, he ran on health care costs. He ran on premiums and deductibles being too high and people should be able to choose their own doctors no matter what. We agree. So let's do that, right? Yeah. That's the whole question. Has anyone heard what Scott Walker said this morning? No. So Scott Walker talked about the waivers that are now allowed, the waivers from pre-existing condition discrimination, the waivers from essential health benefits, which means literally um, uh, what's covered by health insurance, which is another gateway to discrimination because they can just decide not to cover all the expensive things with health conditions need, right? Not cover mental health, for example, not cover the major, the most expensive cancer procedures or the things that you need when you get a cancer diagnosis. So Scott, and by the way, they also could get waivers to be able to charge seniors even more than under the current Republican bill. And so Scott Walker says he's open to such a waiver. We'll see, that he'll see what the final bill is, but he might well consider that. And then Tyrus holds the break. He thinks Tyrus holds the break. Anyone here ever been to high-risk pools in Wisconsin, the great high-risk pools? Uh, the high-risk pools I swam where around. literally premiums might be $10,000 a year, where there were $75,000 or $100,000 caps on coverage, where in many states there were waiting lists. Uh, and quite frankly, the Republicans say they're for high-risk pools. They put in almost none of the money you would need to actually have well-funded high-risk pools. Wisconsin would need over $300 million more per year to cover 5% of people with pre-existing conditions in high-risk pools, and they'd still have to pay $10,000 a year premiums. So how many people can afford that? No one. So... Yeah. Uh, Only the rich! Only the 1%! Yeah. So here's the thing, right? We're only at this point because people thought this was done after the election. And now it took them every whit of part of power imaginable, including risking their own re-elections, right? In order to get this through by two votes and going to the Senate with a very uncertain future. But if we step back, if we stop being the citizens everyone has been in this process, then they'll pass it right away, okay? But if we keep doing what we're doing, not only are we going to prevent them from doing this, we're going to start a huge social movement to guarantee health care is a fundamental human right. It all started. Yeah, yeah. This movement, we're in the middle of the social movement. It's already started. And with that, I want to hand it over to Anna. Okay, Anna. First, Anna. Just remember, thirst is the worst. Ah. Subscribe, bitch.